Hello everyone and welcome to my shop. I purchased my CNC machine a year and a half ago and ever since it has become one of the most used machines in my shop and it make it easier to overcome some of the challenges in traditional woodworking. There are projects that you can do 100% of the process with CNC or you can use your CNC machine along with the other machines in your shop to finish your project. If you recently purchased or if you're thinking of purchasing a new CNC machine and getting into the CNC world, you might be wondering what kind of projects can you do with your machine. Uh, so in this video and the future videos, I will be making some simple projects so you can get some ideas. I will be using Carbide 3D Shapeoko 3XXL. Therefore, I'm going to use Carbide Create to design the project. However, these projects can easily be done with any CNC machine and any CamCAD software. By the way, I'm not going to guide you on how or which CNC machine you should buy. That can be a good topic for a future video. For the sake of simplification, I broke down these projects into five categories. Contouring, pocketing, surfacing, sign making, 2.5D and 3D carving. The things that you can make with your CNC machine are not limited to this list and it is very likely that a combination of these techniques uh, is used in a project. So don't limit yourself and try and explore different ways and techniques. So without further ado, uh, let's jump into today's project. One of the simplest projects to make with your CNC is a coaster or a set of coasters. Uh, here we can uh, look at some coasters and as you can see here, most coasters are simple geometrical shapes. They can be in the shape of a circle or a square or a polygon. Uh, I'm not going to make a coaster. Uh, that would be too easy for even for today's project. What I want to make uh, is a key holder or a key hanger in a shape of a key. Um, here we can uh, see some ideas of a key hanger. Now uh, let's jump to Carbide Create and see if we can design our own key hanger. Here we are at Carbide Create. Uh, first thing first, we need to set up our stock info. I have a rough idea of the size of my project, so I set up here based on that. But if I change my mind later, based on my design, I can come back here and do the adjustment. So for now, I would say 19 by 9 inches and uh, 3 quarter of an inch for the thickness. And I choose soft wood since my stock is a piece of plywood. So in my head, I imagine a shape of a key as a combination of a circle and a rectangle. So first I draw a circle with a radius of three and a half inches and I position it. Then I need to draw a rectangle and uh, for now I would say uh, 10, 10 and a half inches by three inches. And again, uh, I drag it to the position that I like. Also, I want to fillet or round over the corners of this uh, rectangle. Initially, I put quarter of an inch radius around the corners. Uh, then I see it's too small, so I increase the radius to see uh, which looks better. I think one inch radius looks good. Now I go back and change the dimensions of the rectangle. I will say uh, 11 inches by uh, two and three quarter of an inch. And uh, that I think would better. Uh, yeah, that looks better. Uh, then I do the Boolean union to combine the two shapes. Uh, 
I'm going to draw a small circle as a keychain hole. It is not necessary, but I think it makes it more realistic. I don't really know the exact size or the radius. I just look at it and see how it goes uh, with the whole shape. Also, a key should have a jagged edge. To design those peaks and valleys, I select the node editor and insert a few nodes on the edge of the key. It's totally up to you how many nodes you want. Uh, now, when I uh, insert the nodes, I can play with these nodes so the edge uh, looks like a real key. There is no right or wrong way of doing this, just play with them till you get the shape you like. Now, I am done with my design, but before jumping to the toolpath tab, since my design is smaller than my stock, I go back to the setup and resize my stock. Let's start creating our toolpaths. Uh, I choose contour and I choose the bigger shape. For the tool, I choose a quarter of an inch end mill and I change the depth per pass to one eighth of an inch. I left the rest of the values as they are. I set my start depth to the stock top and the max depth is going to be a stock bottom plus one thousand of an inch to make sure that it is going to be cut all the way. The direction of the cut is outside and for the sake of the work holding I add some tabs. I named this toolpath key cutout. Now I need another contour toolpath for the small circle. Everything is going to be like the other toolpath, but the only difference is the offset direction needs to be set to inside. I add uh, one or two tabs uh, to make sure that uh, the small piece doesn't just fly off uh, in the middle of the cutting. And uh, I named this tool path the hole cutout. Now let's check out our simulation. Everything looks fine. So I go ahead and save the file and the G code. So I uh, loaded my G code to Carbide Motion. I secure my stock to the waste board with uh, brad nails. That's enough uh, work holding for this project. And I zeroed out the XYZ uh, using the touch probe. And after that, uh, I just hit run and I'm ready to cut.
So here we are, our shape is cut out. I cut the tabs using the multi-tool and removed them using a flush trim bit on the router table. I cut another one out of pine and for that one I rounded over the edges. From here you can sand it smooth and stain it and finish it the way you like. In the next video, I'm going to make a project using the pocketing technique. So make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss that. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next one.